Hello everyone, this is John Dunbar and I'm doing my uh, assignment 9, our race, class, access, gender and equity video assignment. Uh, first thing, I'm going to talk about my sources uh, instead of putting it at the end. Uh, if you see here, the first uh, speaker I came up with was Helen Turnbull. She's CEO of Human Facets and uh, she brings up some interesting uh, ideas about uh, diversity about how we think about others. The second speech is called uh, Democracy, Diversity, and Social Justice. Okay, this is by James Banks. And uh, see, he's an educator and he's been a researcher and leader in efforts to increase educational equity, equality for students for more than three decades. Okay, and then I use our text by Kuznets and Poster. So. Looking at the first speech uh, by Helen Turnbull, uh, these are some of the things she talked about. First thing she mentioned is our blind spot. She was talking about our uh, preconceived ideas about people, our biases. Um, she gave the example of when she goes on an airplane, the first thing she looks at she boarding is this look at that pilot. And uh, as a good, uh, example, when she saw a female there, it just, you know, it made her nervous. It, it's not what she's used to thinking, what she was expecting. And so those are just giving an idea of some things we have to overcome. And she mentioned the inclusion paradox. Uh, we all are alike in a lot of ways, but yet we're all uniquely different. And we are uh, like some people more than we're like others. But we all have uh, a deep need to feel included. Okay. And then one concept you brought up is our in-group is smaller than our out-group. But the uh, most interesting thing about that was uh, research has shown that uh, when we think about ourselves and we think about the people that uh, we consider in our in-group, we use the same neural pathways. But when we think about strangers, when we think about the people that are in our out-group, we use a different neural pathway. So our, our bodies that you see uh, cause us to think of people differently. The strangers, uh, that we don't know who they are, don't know anything about them. We have uh, our biases and stereotypes. So that's something we have to overcome. <clears throat> Finally, she finished her uh, speech about, the speech on asking us, what do you do to exclude others? What do you do that might be a blind spot for you? That may cause you, uh, if you pay attention to it, to widen the size of your pity group. What can we do, in other words, to get over those stereotypes that we have about people? To have some empathy and think of people, uh, think about things from the other perspectives. Okay. The next speech I uh, watched was uh, by James Banks, and there, uh, some introductory things he brought up first was. Uh, and we have increasing diversity in the nation states around the world. And since World War II, many countries around the world have experienced significant immigration. We mentioned that many countries in Europe and in Asia as well. Of course, in our country, we've had a diverse population for several hundred years now. Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned the challenges of diversity in our schools. By 2050, we're going to have whites only make up half of the population. The minority groups will be half of our population. And you looked at 86% of our teachers, though, are white. And you don't see that uh, changing anytime soon. Because the vast majority of uh, students that are in colleges wanting to be teachers are white as well. Uh, but right now, 40% of students are non-white. So that's some of the challenges. Uh, but if you think about it, diversity offers uh, both challenges and opportunities. Students as well as teachers come to school with their stereotypes in mind. <clears throat> but diversity also enriches our nation. Okay? Uh, you, as we know, we've had many foreign born people come into our country and create the companies that are doing so it's a great thing. So individuals from many groups have made significant contributions to our development. And then finally, what we're going to talk about is the goal of multicultural education is to teach kids to know, to care, and to act. And then uh, 
to summarize very much the message that he would have here, the body of his speech, uh, he talks about the five dimensions of multicultural education. First one he talks about is content integration. Uh, here he's talking about uh, teachers using examples of content from different racial and ethnic groups. And uh, when you do that, students will develop a more positive racial attitude towards these groups. They stereotypes each other. Okay? Students will become more engaged and active learners. If your teacher will incorporate uh, information about the cultures, okay, and their history, experiences into the curriculum. The second uh, dimension we talked about was the knowledge construction process. Gary was talking about how researchers have biases and stereotypes, these preconceived ideas, and we call them biographical journals. And uh, that greatly influences the kind of questions they ask and the kind of conclusions they come up with. And uh, one example that he brought up among several was a study that was done in the 60s and 70s, the bell curve, and the conclusion they came up with was that African Americans would be inferior uh, in intelligence. So that was just one of the examples he brought up. Uh, the next dimension he talked about was the prejudice reduction. Uh, and here he's talking about again curriculum materials the teachers use and, and interventions. If you, you bring in other perspectives about other cultures, this will help the students develop positive attitudes about racial, uh, you know, and other ethnic groups. And so, and so his statement is a democratic multicultural curriculum has a positive effect on both students and the teachers. In order for students to learn about our democracy, to really understand our democracy, they must experience a democratic curriculum in a democratic classroom. The fourth dimension uh, is uh, called an equity pedagogy. And here again, we're talking about teachers using culturally responsive teaching and academic achievement. This, again, where you're bringing in uh, other perspectives, other cultures. Uh, this will help the minority students to, uh, for their achievement to increase. So the final dimension that's called an empowering school culture and, and social structure. And there he uh, brings up the five five characteristics of effective schools. You used to have a safe and orderly environment, a shared faculty commitment to improve achievement, and an environment where you're focused on identifying and addressing problems. Okay? And you must have high faculty cohesion and collaboration so the teachers must get along well for this to have an effective school. And finally, you must have high faculty input in decision making. Get the teachers involved if you want to have an effective school. So in conclusion, uh, he brought up the idea about global citizenship. How when teaching the kids that they're not just uh, Americans, our country that we need to think about being world citizens too. Okay? And he talked about in the balance between the community and diversity. In other words, he was talking about if uh, people assimilate into our country when they come here, uh, we must uh, we must celebrate their cultures. We don't, we don't expect them to just give that up and forget about it. So it must be a fine balance there. And he uh, mentioned that we need to put the voices of women into the system. And uh, one main example about it was uh, Rosa Parks and telling her story. I think we could probably also say we need more voices of minorities in our curriculum too. But anyway, he was talking about the system of that work. So finally, uh, he makes the statement that the more perspective that students learn, the better they will understand our nation and the world. And it's important to know about the important to care about the rest of the world, but to act to increase social justice in their community, the nation, and the world. The next part of our uh, assignment was to discuss success to applying this to leadership. And came up with these five ideas uh, about, uh, and then tied them to the five uh, characteristics of exemplary leadership. We'll talk about it in our text, but this is the process. So, we must build relationships with the teachers, with our staff, the students, and, and come up with things for us. Uh, Building relations, our teachers to build relationships among themselves as well. And I think this fits under model design. And we must uh, develop clear goals. Uh, and that's a, a 
shared mission statement. And I think this falls under inspired by shared vision. And then, you know, to change our attitudes and become a more inclusive environment, we need to discuss that. We need to talk about it. Come up with ways to correct any problems or, you know, to be better, have to be better at including people. We need to challenge the people a little bit. We need to challenge the process. And then we need to provide training to, uh, provide professional development for our teachers so, so, to show them how they can bring in curriculum, uh, that, that brings in other perspectives from other cultures. And that ultimately enable others to us. And then, uh, finally we need to create a, a culture of caring. And I, one thing I mentioned, you hire people that care about students. What comes to mind? I've seen too often teachers or administrators that think some students you just can't do anything with, but some kids just can't learn or they'll never change. You, know, you need to care about everyone. You need to be in, uh, as an administrator, as a teacher, you need to be involved with all your students. Know their activities, get to know them, build relationships, and that's what always falls into it. It encourages the heart. And finally, uh, uh, as part of our assignment, we're supposed to discuss the challenges of being a teacher leader. So, came up with first thing we need to overcome the prejudice, the preconceived ideas that we have about people. Then we need to create an environment that somehow come up with ways to uh, create that environment of cohesiveness and so somehow building relationships among the staff. So, uh, challenge yourself to come up with ways to, to do that. And then one of the big challenges is finding the time. The teachers keep collaborate, finding time for them to perform them, and uh, come up with activities that create the team building that you need to, to build that cohesion. Uh, next, I have uh, treating all students equitably. You know, you need to constantly look at how you're doing things. Are you uh, treating everybody fairly? Who's the student that you're treating them fairly? Um, make sure that you don't have these biases. You know, make sure that you're not punishing. Some students, some minority students, harder than you are, uh, the white students, for example. And then finally, uh, the challenge you need to celebrate the culture differences. Okay? That was, uh, that's what we were talking about earlier. As we uh, assimilate people into our nation, you know, we shouldn't force them 